Hi friends! Welcome back to the Goose and Ghost Knitting Podcast. My name is Ashley and I am the maker and designer behind Goose and Ghost Knits and I'm coming to you today on January 1st, 2023 and I'm feeling it. You know what? Like normally I'm like whatever. Things don't change. It's just it's just a new date, it's just a new number on the calendar. I'm feeling refreshed and up for new things, and I'm optimistic. Generally, I like to think of myself as a realist, and I don't really like to think about the well, like good things are coming when there's no evidence good, good things are coming. But right now I'm feeling like, you know what? Things are gonna turn around and things are gonna be good and good things are coming. So I hope that you can bring the same vibes into the new year and I'm hoping that good things are coming. Let's put intentions forward. So I decided to do one more podcast in front of my Christmas tree this year before we take it down and move back to my normal filming location. But my filming location next time is going to look a little bit different. Um, not moving or anything, but there's something new and exciting that I'll get to later that is going that is now up behind in the background of where I normally film. So I'm very excited to show you. It is a cute little Christmas present that my fiance got me. And it's really exciting, so. Where shall we start to? We shall start here. So, over the last couple months, I believe, I've been teasing to you guys that I have been working on a sock design collaboration with Yarnaceous Fibers. And it was for her Christmas Eve cast on box. And so of course Christmas Eve has come and gone and the pattern has been released. So I want to introduce to you the Santa Saur socks. And I'll pop up a picture here, right, right here of the socks. I do have them here, but I, um, I wore them on Christmas and they were shoved in my snow boots and they have been Torn up, or not really torn up, but they are, uh, they look abused. They look abused. So, uh, pictures are probably gonna be for the best right now. Um, I'll show you, like, the cuff is all wrinkled and it's, they're not cute right now, but, um, I'm gonna go wash them and kind of bring them back to where they're supposed to be at. But here are the socks. I am so proud of this design and, if you picked it up or you picked up the Christmas Eve cast on box um, and redeemed your pattern, I just want to say thank you because this has very quickly become my best selling pattern and it was very humbling throughout Christmas Eve for me to just see the numbers keep ticking and ticking and ticking and I was like, what's going on? Um, and it made me very... I it was happy. I was so happy um, that this this cheesy little Christmassy sock that I designed um, resonated with enough of you to uh, pick it up and enjoy it as well. So I hope that if you picked it up, you enjoyed it. And if you haven't picked it up, let's do a fun little giveaway for the pattern. Um, all you need to be do to receive, to win a copy of the pattern is subscribe to my channel and comment down below on this video. It could be any comment at all. And if you're not interested, just say you don't want them, that's fine. But I wanna give back because the response from these socks has just been absolutely overwhelming to me and I'm so grateful. Um, I've never had a release go like this before. All of my other patterns that have sold well have sold well over time this one was all at once and thank you I'm so happy about it so um this is not the end of the designs I actually have a new design in this podcast that I have been working on 
Um, and it's not the end of the designs with Urinaceous. Fun things are coming. So, um, stay tuned. It's also not the end of Santa Sore Socks in this episode. Stay tuned. <laughs> Anyways, let's get going. Um, on everything else, I have a stack of things here to show you. I have some FOs, that's one that I'm wearing. Um, I have some whips, I have a couple acquisitions, and we'll see where this takes us. So we'll start with what I'm wearing. You guys, I finished it. I did it in time for Christmas. This is my Christmas sweater for this year, the Magnolia Bloom by Camilla Vad. This is what it looks like. I am so in love with this sweater. I am absolutely in love. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I'll give you a little close up here. Um, I'm not gonna stand all the way up because I am wearing uh, Mickey Mouse patterned joggers. And you know what? It's Christmas, or that's not Christmas. It is New Year's Day and I'm rolling on the comfy train. So I did also very purposely try to match my lipstick to my sweater and you know what? I need to wear bold lipsticks more. I feel good in this. I used to do it wear my makeup bold all the time, but I, you know, I haven't recently, but this feels good. This looks good. I love the color. I love the pattern. It's so comfortable too. It's a great combination. So I used um, Knitting for Olive Soft Silk uh, Mohair in the color Clare, and it was held with uh, Knit Picks wool of the andes in the color merlot heather wool of the andes worsted merlot heather and they just came out with this beautiful like the combination is this beautiful marled brown deep red color so it's kind of like a deep brick maroon color i love it and i think it's very christmasy but i can keep wearing it so it's not strictly christmas it's festive that's it it's festive so I really like it I'm very happy with it the fit is fantastic it is so comfortable um, I ended up I only needed to add about half an inch to the uh, to the, the body length and normally I need to add like three or four inches so that was good it is just like tiniest tiny tiniest tiniest bit cropped but it does look intentional so it just sits mm, right above my butt I don't know if I would call that cropped but it looks kind of cropped on me because of my body proportions um and like I do have to wear a tank top underneath it though because the lace goes all the way down past my boobies so um I have to wear I've been wearing a black tank top underneath it today I'm wearing an orange one and it doesn't really seem to make a difference but like you can see where my skin is versus where my tank top is it is what it is um, I still love it I'm thrilled with how this turned out and that does mean that I got to check off one more on my 2022 make nine so I ended the year with six projects done on my make nine and I'm ready to start the remaining three that have been moved to my make nine for 2023. Um, and I have decided which one I'm gonna start first, but then I just got accepted for a test knit tomorrow, or yesterday, that I'm getting all of the information for today. So it's not going to be my first garment cast on of the year, but it will be soon. Cause I don't think this one's the, the test knit is going to take me very long. I also don't know what I can share with you for the test knit. Um, it is for, I'll tell you who it's for. It's for Joan Ho. Um, she has beautiful, beautiful cable designs. And I got to 
she announced she's coming out with a book and I got accepted to test knit one of the designs for her book. I don't know what else I can share, but I know that all of that information has been made public, so I'm so excited. I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go to the yarn store later today to go get my yarn. I just need the email to come through with uh, the yarn requirements or how much I need. But I know what color I want, I know what yarn I want, so I'm excited to go pick it out. So that's my Christmas sweater. And I have decided what my Christmas sweater is gonna be for next year. For this year, it is 2023 now, for this year. And it is not gonna be as subtle as this one. It is going to be full on all out Christmas gonna be great I'm excited all right so my last fo or my not my last my next um I don't I hesitate to call this an fo is it finished yes will I be ripping it back out yes so I finished the muscle burrow I was knitting for Colin for Christmas my fiance for Christmas it looks like this Um, I used Serial Knitters Dye House Wild Skug Base in the color Mystic Blue. Um, I really like how it came out, um, like the yarn. The problem is, and the reason why I'll be ripping it back out, I handed it to him, said, here, try this on, Merry Christmas, and um, it was comically large. It was probably about two inches wide, too wide over here. So I need to uh, reevaluate my gauge and the size that I picked for him. Um, I don't know where it went wrong. I knew, I I knew it was big. I I picked up on it like, like here when I was just past the uh, increases that it was too big and then I had my mom try it on so I wouldn't spoil it for him and it fit her fine but I guess my mom has a bigger head than Colin does but this is way too big um it's not gonna fit him he can't wear it I'm gonna have to rip it out and redo it and I'm not looking forward to it but I'm excited that I get to keep working on a muscle burrow because I still haven't decided what yarn I want to use for mine. But I'm sad that it's not right. So I gotta figure out what went wrong. I've been procrastinating on that because I just, I've been sad that it, it doesn't work out. Um, but if you look on my Ravelry page, I haven't marked it as an FO yet because I have to rip it back out. So um, expect to see this back in the whip category soon so sad and um this is how much I ended how much yarn I ended with not not a whole lot oh my god it just auto focused <laughs> I don't know what I did right there but I've been struggling so long with the autofocus on this camera and it just worked great so that's fun so last fo this one actually is the last fo we've got a sewing project and i said in my last episode one of my goals for the next two weeks well let's go the goals for the next two weeks was to finish all my whips be gentle with myself cast on a new design and start a new dress and i think that i accomplished all of those but one i didn't finish all my whips and we'll get to my whips in a minute. But I started a new dress and I finished a new dress. This is it. It is McCall's M8312. And I did View C, which is the one right here. But instead of the long skirt, I did the skirt from View A, which just has a ruffle all along the bottom. And I started and finished it yesterday start to finish and I will don't think I'll be able to show it very well here 
I will have to cut away with some b-roll for it. I don't know where because my apartment is a disaster right now. But here it is. Um, I ended up shortening the ruffle length at the bottom because I didn't have enough yarn, or enough yarn, enough fabric to do the full length ruffle. Um, and I am very happy with how it turned out. I am actually very happy with how the dress turned out in general. I think it looks great. Um, it is, it's okay. It's not a flattering dress by any means, but it's comfortable. It is so comfortable and I do feel cute in it. Um, <laughs> I was laughing to myself last night when Colin walked in after I've been working on it all day and he just saw that I've been working on it. He had no clue what I was making. And he was like, oh, well that sure is an Ashley dress. <laughs> and you know what, he's right. It's not cute, but it is cute because I feel cute. So I ended up wearing it most of the night yesterday um, for New Year's Eve before I said, I'm a little bit cold. It's pajama time and I just wore my pajamas until bedtime where we were asleep for midnight. And that is how you do New Year's Eve, you guys. That was fantastic, it was fantastic. But, okay, so I worked on this all day yesterday. I learned a lot, like I have been. There are a lot of loose threads, so maybe I'm not completely done. I just need to go through and clean some things up. Um, but I am really happy with how it turned out. I am happy with the fit. Um, it's, it's great, it's great. And I actually have some fabric that I bought intentionally to um, to make a, a shirt version of this. So I'm going to do all of the same things for the top, um, for the bodice part where you know the sleeves connect at the waistband, all of that. But for the skirt part, it's just gonna be cut off like right here-ish. So it's, it goes to my, my hips instead of to my knees. And it's just going to be a shirt. And I have some linen uh, set aside for that. So I don't know when I'm going to make it. I'll probably wait for a little bit. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this. And I love the fabric. It's just a, I think it's a, just a quilting cotton. It is a quilting cotton. But I like how it, it worked. And it feels like, like it still has some movement. But I think with the ruffles, it has some structure. And with the sleeves too, the sleeves, the sleeves are awesome. They're so unique. So, um, learned a lot once again. And this is the first sewing project that I've made where I put one of my labels in. Um, it's not going to focus now. I don't know what I did right a couple minutes ago. But I put one of my labels in. It's just my first and middle name. Um, but my grandma got me these for Christmas last year because she was so excited that I picked up knitting. Um, because my, my grandma's an amazing woman. She's been... Um, she sewed all of, knit and sewed all of her clothes for all of her kids. She has a lot of kids um, throughout their entire lives and now and is doing the same thing for her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Um, even though she doesn't have the motor skills anymore, um, but she was so excited that somebody in the family picked it up uh, and was continuing. So she got me a pack of, of, of labels that said my name on it and um, has been gifting me a lot of her vintage and antique knitting and sewing notions because, again, she's so excited that somebody gets use out of them. And it's, I think it's really cool to get the things that she's used her whole life um, 
and incorporate them into my own my own practices I, I think it's very sentimental and, and sweet so I'm very honored that she wants them wants me to have them so that's all I've got for FOs but you know what that's that's a decent amount I've done a lot in the last two weeks but let's talk about what I didn't finish in the last two weeks that I wanted to uh, my advent socks these are almost done I kept up with them 100% kept up with them for all of advent did one stripe a day and this is what they turned out like this is the freckled whimsy advent sock self striping 24 stripes for 24 days and I did one stripe every single day on two socks and I finished the toes like they're all done but I've been procrastinating cutting into the afterthought heel I've got the placement done I just need I need to cut and I've been so scared too because I've never done a true afterthought heel every afterthought heel I've ever done has been um, a forethought heel where I put the waist yard in I didn't know where the afterthought heel would end up on this one so I couldn't do it and I've been nervous to cut into it so I've been procrastinating it but this is what it turned out like the ending is not my favorite I think this of course the blues and greens this little section right here is my favorite um, but I did like this little section right here with the gray and lavender and pinky purple I was like oh it looks like Rapunzel so I liked that but I don't I don't like pink so these will be done these will be done I think this is what I'm gonna work on today and just force myself to do it just just gotta force myself to cut into these socks it'll be okay <laughs> it'll be fine so they're so close and um, I was using bare stroll glimmer for the heels toes cuffs it's just a white oh you can see the sparkle there white sparkle soft yarn and this is left over from my shawlography Stephen West M Cal next last year all right um next up I decided to join in on all of the fun on Christmas Eve and everybody who was casting on their Santa Store socks um, I decided to cast on a pair too even though I've already made them but I really like the pattern of course because I made it but I wanted to I put some instructions in the pattern for um, making it just the texture and I wanted to try that out so I caked up a ball of another yarnaceous yarn that I have this is called mommy's very angry um, and I believe it's from her Jurassic Park Club from 2021 so I don't believe it's available anymore but it's just like purples and grays and browns and I think it's turning out really cute it's just neutral but so this is the Santa Sore socks with just the texture not the color work not the bobbles just the texture and it's turning out like this I haven't worked on it a whole lot but it it's I think this is such a good like almost vanilla mindless pattern but still has just a little bit of interest but if you also need to make socks for somebody you don't know what size they are it is so stretchy because um, because of this stitch pattern so it's gonna be squishy it's gonna be comfortable and you can't really see the stitch 
pattered as well as you can in the the lighter color you can really see what the, the stitch pattern looks like on this one but it helps if there's not loose threads in the way but I wanted to cast on a pair with just the, the texture and I'm liking them this is going to be, until I'm done with them, my vanilla project. Um, I'll take these to work for the next little bit, and then I will go back to the uh, uh, muscle burrow and fix it. But, these first. Alright, then the last project that I've been working on um, is the new design that I wanted to cast on. And there's not a lot to show yet, and it looks kind of basic so far, but I'm keeping it in my Christmas bag, my Christmas avocados bag, because it is just the perfect shawl size bag. So I'm going to need to make another one of these bags for not Christmas time, um, which means I need to go buy some fabric to make a non-Christmas time bag. But... For now, um, the yarn, the only yarn I've used so far is Kelborn Woolen's Scout, um, which is 100% wool, uh, it's a DK weight yarn. This is in the color Strawberry Heather, and it just has like flecks of uh, like tan and blue and like grayish purple purple throughout so it is a heathered yarn um it just feels nice it's squishy it's nice dk weight wool yarn and this is where i'm at on the shawl design like i said not much to speak for it yet um there will be something exciting with it but it's just a basic shawl Design so far. So it's alternating garter and eyelets with an eye cord border, but the eyelets are getting, eyelet sections are getting bigger. I need to finish this boring section before I can get to what makes it unique, and I'm excited to do that. But again, this is, it's simple. It's a real simple project. I have uh, no timeline on this. I can get it done whenever I want. Um, but I will put in a marker. I don't know where any of my stitch markers are. I will put in a marker right now for where I'm at today. We'll do a green one so there's lots of nice contrast against the pink. Um, and I will update you on the next podcast. I'm in an eyelet section right now, so... Oh, yeah. Um, I do have a name for this. Um, and you can probably figure it out if you go back into my Instagram all the way to last beginning of last year. But I'll wait until it's further along before I share the name. Um, and this is a redo of a pattern that I tried to make last January, February, and it just wasn't working out. I wasn't, the numbers weren't working. I didn't think about uh, stitch count in sections. So I'm going back and reworking it. I've made it a little bit, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different construction, um, but it still has the same idea. And it still has the same like interest piece in it. So, I hope that I can get through a bunch of that in the next two weeks. I don't know how much knitting time I'm going to have, though. I don't really know what's going on in the next two weeks. But. All right, so should we talk about what acquisitions I got for Christmas? All we really have left is acquisitions and goals. So... I said that I was going to share what I got for Christmas. I didn't really get a lot of um, 
knitting or sewing stuff for Christmas. Most of what I got was stuff for like decor decorations for our wedding, which is fantastic. If you're planning a wedding and you have a, a like a birthday or a Christmas or Hanukkah or a gift giving holiday um, in between now and your wedding, highly recommend asking for wedding things. We got all of our tablecloths and um, I got some like some photos from our engagement and I got some a, a pair of Disney Mickey ears with a veil on them. Um, I highly recommend doing that because it's taken a lot off of our budget <laughs> that helps. So I really only got two knitting related things for Christmas. First one is from my parents. They got me a set of blocking pins. And I've just been using uh, sewing pins for all of my blocking. So this one is one of the sets that has the uh, four prong ones and however many this is, like eight. Um, and then it comes with a lot of T-pins too and a, a measuring tape. So that's great. I'm really excited to use this. Um, it'll help a lot. I actually, um, I need to block this because when I finished it originally, I finished it on the 22nd, I wouldn't have had time to wet block it and have it be dry for Christmas. So I was gonna, I just steam blocked it to kind of loosen it up. But I, my preference really is to wet block everything. Um, so I am going to go wet block it now and I have these pins and all of these I'm really excited to use these especially for shawls because um like I want this 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 edge here kind of wavers a lot and having those four and eight prong ones they'll just get it very even when it blocks and it it just wavers because of what the stitch pattern does because of the difference between garter and eyelet. It's just nature, nature of stitch patterns. It's not a big deal. Um, then the other thing that I got for Christmas, knitting related, isn't, it is knitting related, but it's not traditionally knitting related. Um, and this is what's going to be behind my, my filming location now. I got a bunch of yarn storage. So I've been complaining to my fiance for a while now that like I have good yarn storage. It's just tucked away and I never see it. So I don't know what I have. Um, and it's great that it's out of the way. It, it creates less clutter, but it's almost to a detriment because I don't know what I have then. So I'll go out and buy more. But this way it's what he got for me. I'll put in some B-roll. It's it's very visual. I can see everything that I have and everything is separated out into its own cubicles. So I've got the whole bottom section here is all of my sweater quantities. And then the second row is sock yarn. And then in the middle is self striping sock yarn. And the last one is all of the yarn that I've bought to design my own patterns. And then above that, uh, in the third row up, is yarn that I have plans for and some just some miscellaneous stuff. And then the last one is yarn that I've put aside for dyeing. Um, and then I'm going to squish in my all my project bags somewhere in there as well. Um, and I have some more yarn put aside somewhere else too. It's still back in our storage uh, where I originally had all of it stored, but that's stuff that I'm okay with having put away and 
I don't need it to see it. It's just kind of extra stuff that I like single skeins and and yarn that I don't have a purpose for, but if I I know where to look for it. And then up above, that is where all of my FOs go now. So I actually have dedicated sweater storage and shawl storage. Instead, they were just kind of shoved back in my closet and I couldn't see them easily. And now they're all accessible. And I have put up all of my fabric in there too. So I'm very, very excited to have an actual yarn wall. <laughs> um, so it'll be good too to like visually see as I pull things out um, what I'm getting rid of as I'm using it. And it was great, great chance for me to sort through my yarn stash and kind of take away what I'm not going to use. Um, so I have a good box of yarn to go to donations, some that I'll be taking to Goodwill and some that um, I'll be taking to the Seattle Recreative store, which is a art supply store in the Green Greenwood district of Seattle. Um, Greenwood neighborhood district, no. Greenwood neighborhood of Seattle that is all secondhand uh, art supplies. So I'll go donate a box of yarn to them as well. So that'll be really good too. It'll go to somebody who will uh, get good use out of it. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to have all of this. But because of that department's mess, because I'm, I'm pulling things out and putting them away and I don't really have ideas of where I want to put some things. So it's just kind of everything's kind of a mess but I'm figuring it out all right last acquisition I have is kind of fun so um, I went to go visit my parents for the week after a couple of days after Christmas and um, my mom has been quilting most of my life she kind of hasn't she hasn't in the last couple of years but she most of my life she's quilted and I recently started sewing and my sister decided that she also wanted to start sewing and her her inspiration and her reasoning is that she wants a really fun outfit to wear to the Taylor Swift era's tour and she the only way that she's gonna do that is if she makes it so she's starting to sew because she wants to wear a cool outfit to the era's tour which I think is hilarious, but it's very on brand for her. So we went to the fabric store in town um, where my parents live and uh, she picked up some fabric to make a couple outfits to start learning. And then we were like, let's go to the thrift store too. We can go see if there's like um, sheets or fabric remnants that we can go get um, and we did run across a couple sheets I got one basically this color California King sheet that I will be using at some point but for now it's just gonna go into stash but we also found mystery packs of patterns so for four dollars I got one two three four five six seven, eight patterns and an instruction book. Um, and surprisingly, all of the patterns are in my size. They're all uh, vintage patterns and so at least 15 years old as the definition of vintage is. And most of them I probably won't use or I will need to heavily edit to make it a little bit more stylish but five dollars for all of this and the one pattern that like they came in clear bags one pattern that I could see on top um, I knew that I would make and I loved uh, and it I could see the price the original price for it is originally $23 so I was like okay five dollars 
for all of these and I just want this one pattern if all of the rest of them are bad whatever if all the rest of them are good that's a bonus so this is the one that I wanted um, it's a simplicity 1940s vintage 8462 is the pattern name um, and it's it's just a vintage 40s suit set so I wanted the skirt I thought that was great and then so let's go through the other patterns that came in the set a caftan which I'm actually low-key tempted to make um, and just some some set some suit sets I don't know how much I'll use those ones um, this coat that I actually really like all three of the the views so great little coat um, this shirt set this jacket which I actually do not like at all and I don't think I'll use but my sister said she really likes so maybe I'll put it aside and she can have it not my vibe um, these vests which are actually kind of similar to things that are popular now but just need a little bit of tweaking and then the two that made me laugh the most is this McCall's set of wedding accessories and this is I wasn't I googled it because I really wanted to find a date for it and I wasn't able to find one all I was able to find is 80s but it comes with um, a pouch a ring bears pillow a garter two pairs of gloves um, a floral bouquet that you can make, hand make yourself a wreath um, flower crown for your flower girls little flowers to like attach to your shoes um, and then there's multiples of all of them so I thought that was so cute so funny I don't know if I'll end up making any of these but ooh, I thought it was hilarious and I really actually really liked it <laughs> and then the last one that it came with is just the instruction booklet there is no pattern pieces for it but it's a wedding dress this is simplicity 0863-1772 I don't know what I'm going to do with this I'm probably going to just throw it away because it's just the instruction booklet and I don't have the pattern pieces for it but I thought that was so funny that it was a wedding dress um, and it comes with instructions for a veil too it's it's I'm buying my wedding dress so I thought it was so funny though um, my sister ended up buying three mysteries and there was a lot of good patterns in hers too there was a lot of uh, not quite stylish patterns but things that she'll make work and have have instructions and all of them were complete like no one's even gotten into the the envelopes like, this has never been opened everything in here is intact so I thought that was a good deal I thought it was kind of fun especially since I just wanted just this one and I came away with a caftan how much fun is that I don't know what I'll ever wear it for but I think it's fun it's also five and a half yards of fabric for one so I don't know how much I'll actually go for that but yeah that's all I really got um 
acquisitions probably are going to be low coming up because I need to save money for my wedding and um, you know flock fiber festivals coming up in the summer and that's where I'm going to blow most of my money that I have saved throughout the year be great it'll be fun it'll be really fun I'm very excited for flock um, other than that yeah it was it was a great Christmas uh, we ended up going over to my parents house for a couple of days after Christmas uh, just kind of hung out there was a little bit of a stressful moment the day after Christmas um, it had been what weather around here has been fluctuating a lot it's been really weird so it's been really really cold there was a huge 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 ice storm we don't normally get ice storms around here um, two days before Christmas it shut down everything I ended up slipping and hurting myself on some ice really bad so I had to call out of work one day another day I was the only person to show up to work out of everybody um, so there it, w it was a wild time um, and because my parents live in the mountains they got hit with it even more so it's just been nuts all that said it had been very cold there was a lot of snow and a lot of ice and after on Christmas and the day after Christmas it was starting to warm up it was like 40 degrees above Ooh, so then it was above freezing so everything was melting and um, my parents have a huge shop on their property and so we wanted to go um, the day after Christmas all of us were going out to go look at something in the shop um, and my brother runs I was putting my my mom and I were putting our shoes on to go head out to the shop and everybody else had already head out there and my brother runs back to the shop it flooded the shop flooded so we all run up there and we're like crap there was two inches of water over everything um so we spent like an hour hour and a half sweep trying to sweep and shovel water out of the shop luckily we discovered where the flood originated from um a pipe just disconnected from its its connector just disconnected um when in the freezing and rethawing process so and we got to it pretty quickly we think so because nothing was damaged at all there's no d water damage and we managed to get out most of the water in the sweeping and shoveling out process it was it was traumatic dramatic it wasn't traumatic it was dramatic but it wasn't that bad so uh, everything we got all of like the standing water out and it was just like the, the ground was wet which is it's a cement floor so it's okay to be wet so we were got most of it out to the point where it was just wet floor and the next day it was mostly dry um, we put space heaters in and fans overnight so that was good that it was dramatic moment that turned out to be okay and there was a bunch of us there too so we were able to all work to get it all to out but it's good that nothing was damaged um, everything that needed to be safe was elevated enough so that was a great blessing um, other than that because of the ice and um, we, Colin and I were gonna go snowboarding that week uh, because the ski area is only about half an hour from my parents house where it's an hour from here where we live so we were gonna go snowboarding 
and it was raining and the snowpack was icy so we decided not to go which sucked we were really looking forward to it but we'll be able to go at some point later in the season now um but that was that was sad we wanted we were really looking forward to going um but other than that we don't really have anything big coming up in the next two weeks uh it's just gonna be some chill time at home colin just had something really big happen at work exciting things happen at work so he's gonna be busy for the next week before uh the new contract that his company signed goes into place and I'm very excited for him. I'm very proud of him. Um, he's worked really hard to get it. Um, but other than that, not much going on. So shall we talk about my goals for the next two weeks? And I would love to hear what your goals are for the next two weeks. Go ahead and leave them down below. Um, I want to clean the apartment. This clutter is getting to me and there's a lot of like post Christmas things and it's getting on my nerves. So I'm ready for a clean out. Um, and related to that, all that yarn that I was talking about, I want to get it donated. Normally when I have things that need to go to donation, I sit on them forever and I just kind of like procrastinate it. I want it gone. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's, let's go. Um, and then the last one, I want to paint. I want to prioritize painting in my schedule, not just professionally um, for my live wedding painting business, but for myself as well. I, I need to, I need to work on painting. Like it's, it's makes me happy and I'm, I'm ready to get it back into my routine. So. What goals do you have for the next two weeks? Please leave them down below. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to enter the giveaway, which if you're leaving a comment and subscribing, you are automatically entered. Um, and that's all I've got today. I'll see you later. Bye friends.